I first heard of John Harrison some 60 years ago, he did about 1947. Gould's drawings and even the rather poor photographs of H4 absolutely captivated my imagination. All right, I won't make a replica, I'll simply make another one. The first thing to do is to make the movement frame. Here we're starting to drill the many holes and turning the recess where the dial sits. Screwing the pillars in, they too will be riveted. A template to get the shape right. A large disc of silver provides the material. Turning over the edge to stop a certain amount of buckling. Bring up chenier, the tubing to make a hinge, which then goes through the draw plate. Checking with the end pieces, Martin using the chalumeau. First thing we need now is a top edge. Martin first of all makes a ring and solders the ends together. So the case is finished, look at the size of it. Now we move over to Holland to Jos Hubraken, painting in the first numerals. Now the very intricate and beautiful pattern work. Meanwhile work is going on with the movement. Here we see the movement. And there we have the fusee assembly. This is the back showing parts which are going to ultimately be engraved. So now Charles starts in earnest. Charles is tracing in the final details onto the balance bridge. And many, many of these openings all to be sawn out. Derek had made significant progress but he knew that he wouldn't be able to complete his H4 and asked Charles Frosham and company to take on the project. This is the fourth wheel pinion being polished. First with a copper polisher, then finishing with a boxwood polisher to produce the final polish. H4 is extensively jewelled, right from the third wheel to the balance. The balance potence has four dovetail slides, two for holding the balance and escape wheel end pieces, a third for the front escape jewel hole, and the large slide on the left for adjusting the depth of the escape wheel with the pallets. Jewel holes had to be specially made as they were thicker than normal. We are turning the convex top of the jewel. Now putting a chamfer on the side of the jewel using a copper lap. The diamond is two millimeters long and the radius is 0.6 millimeters. The balance spring has three complete turns with a long tail. Adjusting the watch involved balancing the strength of four springs. 